Have you ever wondered what a machine learning engineer has to do? Well, I guess so, because here we are. Today we'll go over a few things that I have to do as a machine learning engineer, or technically applied machine learning researcher, but you know. As for my background, I'm a student researcher at the Fraunhofer Heinrich Hertz Institute in the Department for Applied Machine Learning. I work in a fairly small group as part of a larger project, and that pretty much means that I have my fingers in almost every part of a machine learning project. The tasks of a machine learning engineer or researcher vary a decent amount depending on the problem they have to solve, the data they are using, and the data they have access to, and stuff like that. I mean, take a look at larger companies for example. They can pretty much collect as much user data as they want. For example, Netflix might collect as much viewing histories of users as they want and extract certain features and watch time and stuff like that. This task can generally be described as data engineering and larger companies might have specific data engineers. And that way they can separate that job from the one that machine learning engineers or researchers might have to do. Now, since I work in the applied machine learning department of a research institution, I work on one project of many, and my jobs include quite a bit of research and theory, but also this data engineering process. Again, in my case, this data engineering part is probably one of the largest and most time-consuming parts. Since we just don't have our own data set and we have to engineer it ourselves from scratch. To give a few specific examples of what data engineering includes, it includes working with databases, right? You have sources where you want to collect your data from and you have to store that in a database. It also includes writing fetcher modules in Python, for example, to really collect that data from services or sources, then store that in the database in a formatted fashion. Again, for example, imagine you have to do something like web scraping or just connect to some services. You might be able to use an API of the service and then just do some API calls and collect the data you need, but if you don't have access to that, you have to come up with a different way. It again depends on the data you need. Some cases might be pretty easy. You want to connect to a Google API, then do some API requests and you have your data. But that sometimes isn't the case and you have to come up with another idea. Or you might work with some completely new data like satellite images and you have to first figure out how to work with satellite images and connect to them via a service provider and stuff like that. And finding suitable data sources and communicating with the data providers is a thing that I also have to do in this data engineering process. Sticking with the example of those satellite images, whether you are using it for predicting wildfires, detecting illegal fisher boats in the ocean or predicting traffic flow, you have to compare the features the different data providers offer. In some cases, you don't care about the resolution of those images, but you need them at a high frequency, meaning every one or two days, for example. In other cases, you don't care about the frequency. They can be sent to you every three weeks, but you need a high resolution to be able to detect specific corners or edges. So in summary, that means I not only have to write some Python codes to collect the data and store it in some database, but it also means that I have to research some sources and then communicate with data providers and see if they are suitable for us. That means that this communication process is really important, not only with our data providers, but also with our project partners. We as machine learning researchers or engineers don't specifically have a task, right? We need to apply our knowledge and our skill set or whatever to a specific problem that we want to solve. And for that, we need project partners, in my case at least. So that just means that my work also includes communicating with other people and other project partners, and that's pretty fun actually. Okay, we covered the data engineering part and the discussions with other project partners part. Let's finally get to the machine learning research part. When developing something new or novel, you have to know about the state of the art, or otherwise your research from the get-go is deprecated. You have to know how other people have successfully solved a similar problem. You have to know how the model that you want to use actually really works. I mean, everyone in this field pretty much knows what a feed-forward neural network is or a convolutional neural network. But do you, for example, know how a graph neural network works? Part of my work includes actively learning new things. And I really love that. It includes reading papers, articles, blog posts, watching lecture videos, and yes, also educational YouTube videos. There's so much free educational material on the internet. After all that research, we finally get to model development. Here we look at the data we have and the prediction we want and how we can model that correlation. 
Let's take for an example some time series forecasting. There we want to use a sequence to sequence model. That obviously makes sense. But what if the data is too little or too sparse? What if we don't have really good time series data? Then we just can't use a sequence to sequence model. In that case, we have to get creative and think of another approach. For example, let's think of classification. This work means sitting down and thinking about how to solve the problem, how to embed the data in the best way possible, how to combine different data types, which model you want to use and which statistical methods you can apply to solve the issue of sparse matrices or just incomplete data sets. That means you just sit down and use your brain and then discuss it with your colleagues and combine the ideas. So for now, data engineering, research, thinking about modeling and development, and we can now finally get to training. To make it short, I here get to the point where I just have to develop this pipeline, where I read in the correct data, format it in the way that I want to, and then pass it through the neural network using something like PyTorch, and then just press play. After starting the initial training, the first thing you have to do is deal with all the software engineering bugs that you have implemented and then look at the more theoretical problems that you have to solve that are not related to software engineering specifically. Things like, why is the learning going so slow? Why is the loss not improving? So great, the training actually works, but somehow the results are not what we expected or wanted. How can we improve the model? Do we actually need to change the architecture? Can we just include a few more features or is the way we are combining data of different formats leading to some issues? Or is it just an issue with hyperparameter tuning and stuff like that? And this is a constant loop of training, then benchmarking, then tuning the model. Eventually, or even during the training process, you want to deploy the model somewhere, want to use it even if there are different versions that you are going to improve in the future. And that means that I am exchanging with project partners that want to potentially deploy the model that we are using. I have to be able to give that in a format that is easy for them to use. That means I have to be aware of how to use Docker, how to use a REST API and stuff like that. Pretty much software engineering. Oof. Okay, um, that seems like a lot perhaps, but you know, you're not doing everything at once. All of those different steps or phases are spread across several months or even years. And I again want to highlight that it really varies quite a bit what you have to do as a machine learning engineer or researcher. So this is just what I have to do or my experience. And I hope that this video could bring you some value or some insight into what it might look like what a machine learning engineer or researcher has to do. If you want to see what a day in my life as a machine learning engineer looks like, you can click up here. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see future videos. And with that said, as always, thank you very, very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.